I've started playing in a music school in Switzerland, and actually when I when I first went to the school, I I, I wanted to play the cello, and in those days, in the olden days, they didn't have any sort of half size and three quarter sized instruments. So the director there gave me a trumpet and said, play this until you're a bit bigger. And uh, that's how I, I started that. And after that, I sort of moved on to baritone. I wasn't quite suited to the small mouthpiece and then wasn't too suited to the baritone either and ended up on the, on the tuba. Yeah, the bands I played with in Switzerland were the... Um, which is one of the top bands still at the moment is the the BBO, the Berner Oberland Brass Band. And also a thing we had is also the National Youth Brass Band of Switzerland, which was which was great because as you know you've been there yourself. Um as a tutor, they always have a, a set of British tutors. So we had brilliant conductors and and um tutors coming across and sort of encouraging you and, and actually that's how how I was sort of encouraged to then move to, to Britain to come and, and study. I studied in um, Huddersfield. At the, at the time it was the Huddersfield Tech. They had a, a, a good brass band course going. And there was a couple of other foreign students there as well. Um, and through them, sort of chatting through with them, they, they sort of said, yeah, go come here. And at the time there was uh, Philip McCann was there, Peter Parks, uh, Jim Shepherd. So you had like the, you know, who's who in brass banding. And as a tuba tutor, I had An Andy Duncan, who at the time played with the Holly Orchestra, and also Brian Kingsley, who was at the Opera North. Before joining Fodens, I played at the in Huddersfield. At the uh, there used to be the Huddersfield Tech Hall Band or Tech Hall Band, and then it, it, I think it turned into the. Sellers Engineering Band a little bit later. I played with them and then had a, a very short stint at Grimethorpe Colliery. And um, it was then, I think Howard Snell, he was doing some work with the band then and, and I, I'm not sure if they, well, I think they tried him to go there. And um, he, he obviously he was at Desford and Foden's at the time and, and he said to me, why don't you come and play with Foden's? And that's how I got to start coming down here and playing with the band. I joined Foden's in I think nineteen back end of nineteen eighty seven and I think and I left ninety five ish, something like that. Well, the most memorable performance. We we did a lot of good good performances and, and um some of them got rewarded and others probably less so, but uh probably one of the highlights with all in all with with what we got out of it, probably the European Championships in in um, Cardiff, I think they were in '92. Uh, particularly this uh, the own choice piece where we played the Year of the Dragon, and that seemed to be a very magic performance and a great performance to be part to be part of. That probably ranks up as uh, near the very top, if not the top, anyway. Favorite venues? Well, I, I, th I suppose it's it's always the open and the the national are are um, great venues to to play at. I, I did to when I first joined the band. The, the open was still at the Free Trade Hall in Manchester, and before it then moved down to the to the Symphony Hall. I think there was one near it was at the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester. So those those big concert venues, and then even you know like sort of local gigs like the Victoria Hall in in uh, Stoke and um, places like that. But in terms of, of big places, yeah, probably the Albert Hall and Free Trade Hall, Symphony Hall, and the Europeans we did in Rotterdam, you know, in the, in the, bigger, in the bigger acoustics. Yeah. Favourite test piece? Difficult one. To, uh, sort of a, as, a, as a bass player, I remember when, the, um, when Philip Sparks' Partita was first written and there was quite a big sort of E-flat solo in the, in the first movement and I suppose purely from a selfish point I would probably choose something which uh, featured the E-flat bass quite heavily. Um, I like playing lots of different, different, different pieces, chal challenging stuff. And in terms of test pieces, I mean, we, we did in the early 90s those Britannia season concerts for a couple of, couple of years, I think. And, and those concerts, I mean, the concept was, I think it was two 
two test pieces in the first half and three in the second half. So, it, you know, it's it was a proper proper challenge playing those sort of works, and and I, I enjoyed playing them all really. Well, socially in the band, we we had to, we had a, a good a good um, group of players, and and I suppose overnight stays were were always very much enjoyed. Um, some some probably a bit too much than what we should have what we should have done, and I and I do remember one of them. Um, I can't remember where it was. I I, I remember the night though. It was somewhere down south, and we'd we'd probably stayed up a bit too long and had a bit of a top shelf competition as we used to call it and then the next day we had a, a matinee concert and um, I think the band was rather a bit tired and I remember how we we're getting the band together for a, for an interval talk which ha didn't happen very often just to make sure everybody woke up and started playing in the second half. Well playing wise I'd, I I didn't really do much much more playing after that because it, I sort of I, I was sort of in a little bit of a dilemma. I started conducting at the time and had initially quite a lot of success as a as a conductor, and and then it it, it was the normal sort of thing dates of clashing and and competition. The phones being in the same um, competition as perhaps one of the bands I took or so. So it it was sort of came to a to a to a head of. In those days, I think we were a lot less flexible than we are these days. I mean, these days you could probably conduct the band and, and play in one. I mean, there's plenty of players, of musicians who do that. In those days, it was you were either at one place or or the other. So, in terms of playing, just with the with the quintet we had, um, I still did. We still did quite a few sort of gigs with that. But in terms of band playing, none really after phones. Well, the first band that I started as conductor was Northup Band, um, and uh, they were they were in the in the championship section, obviously based in North Wales, and and I think we had something like won the first nine competitions in a row um, and qualified for for London first time I think in the band's history in the in the championship section, and and then. From that, it then sort of led off, get, led to guest conducting other bands, you know, doing competitions as a as a pro conductor, um, and yeah, that that's about that's about it. Yeah. Well, my relationship with Howard was, as I mentioned earlier, I, I met him when he was um, actually he was he was one of the conductors who was over with the National Youth Brass Band of Switzerland well before I moved over here. So I came across him then. I didn't really meet him. I mean, he was sort of, you know, he was almost like God. You couldn't really approach him in, in those sort of, uh, as, a, as a player off the band. But then I met him and he did some conducting at, at Grimethorpe and uh, got chatting to him. And, and um, when he invited me to come down to phones and, and join the band and then I sort of started studying. He offered he offered me that I could study with with him, and I I, I think I ended up doing about four years with him, and um, we had a really good good relationship. And and he had the farm in Hollington at the time, and I would used to stay there overnight and and um, help him with his rakeaway publishing as well, and and I did conducting and arrange arranging with him and. Yeah, it was. He was. He was very, very good. I was very. To me, it was very. I was very lucky to have have met him. And 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 even when I started first conducting, he he offered to come along to those bands and and sit there and and have a listen and advise me and and uh, help me out that way. I do remember one one um, one of the first conducting things I I did. He he said, "Oh, I'm going up to Scottish Co-op." and because he was the professional conductor then. And we were, we were driving, I met him on the motorway from, from Huddersfield, the M6, and we were driving up together. And it must have been about five minutes outside Glasgow. He, he goes, there, Tom, there's a score on the back seat. I want you to take the band through that, that piece later. And I thought, well, you could have given me a little bit more warning than five minutes. And it, it ended up being Freedom by Bath, which, uh, isn't the easiest easiest piece to conduct. And then he started the rehearsal and showed him how it's meant to be done. And then I had to I sort of had to follow him, which was I suppose 
be thrown in the, if you're thrown in the deep end, you can see if you can swim or swim or sink, I suppose. When I was at Foden's, to be fair, we didn't really have any other any other guest conductors. I I I can honestly. I think the only one I played in was was James Scott, who came and did a who did a, a concert. Um, apart from that, I think I would did every single rehearsal. In terms of guest conductors, Jim Scott's the only one I can remember who did a who did a concert with the band. In those days, it, it was just the same as you know all that time I spent in the in the in the band. Uh, those I think near enough eight years. I think I missed two rehearsals, and that was due to getting married, because obviously my my wife she played in the in the band as well. And I remember going going and asking Howard. I said, "We're getting married. Uh, I won't be at the rehearsal on Thursday." And he, and he goes, "Do you really need Thursday off?" And I said, "Well, the, the wedding's in Scotland, so we, you know, and people are coming over from from the continent, so we can't just go up on the Saturday and get married on the Saturday." And then I, I did ask him for the following week for the Tuesday off as well. And I remember his answer was, "How long does it take to get married these days?" So in in those days it was just much more you you couldn't really you couldn't really miss and and you had be I think behind every chair you had a couple of players lined up so if somebody wasn't there or was slipping up there was a replacement for you there before you knew it and it was just a different different kind of banding I suppose then. <laughs>